Phil is at Southwest HQ in Dallas with a special guest. Hey, Phil. Hey, Carl, looking out on Love Field. Bob Jordan, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Uh, let's be honest. You miss on the top and the bottom line. Ugly first quarter, and people are looking at your guidance and the cut in capacity. Investors are saying to themselves, when does Southwest start to grow again? Because I feel like the ground continues to shift under us. Well, we had a strong first quarter, uh, despite the financial uh, results. We had record operating revenues. We had record passengers, record rapid reward member ads. Uh, but we have a number of markets in the, uh, in our, across our network that are just not performing. So we're taking action. We're further optimizing the network. We never like to close cities. We're closing four cities. We are cutting capacity in Atlanta and Chicago here, and we're restructuring other, other cities and uh, taking other actions. And we're committed to doing this until we hit our financial returns. Let's talk about the max planes. You started this year expecting to receive 80 max planes. You keep having to cut it down lower and lower. New guidance is what? You're expecting 20. How much is this hurting your ability to plan? You know, we uh, just starting with Boeing at the very top. We support Boeing taking the time to fix their issues, become a better company, because that is good for Southwest Airlines and the country long term. But there's no doubt this is a significant issue. Replanning, uh, adjusting schedules for our customers. And yeah, we're, we're significantly down from our originally planned deliveries. But that's not going to be an excuse. We need to hit our financial targets and we'll take action. We're adjusting our network. We are tuning our revenue management system. We are taking marketing actions. And uh, we're looking at new initiatives, things uh, like uh, the way we seat and the way we board our aircraft. Let's talk about that. For the longest time, this has been an airline where you buy a seat or a ticket, you pick the seat, generally speaking. Is there a possibility we may see a business class or some type of a bifurcation within the cabin? Well, there's nothing to report today except the fact that we are studying this. We, we always want to know what our customers expect and, so our, and, and their preferences. So we are studying our seating and our cabin right now. Uh, and again, there's nothing to report today. But customer preferences do change over time. And, and customers love our current product. I love our current product. But it was designed at a time when load factors were significantly lower than they are today. So we're working hard to understand what our customers want. We've changed before. We've added things like Wi-Fi, power, larger overhead bins. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very early. But the results uh, are interesting, and uh, we're continuing to study this, and more to come later. That's a tease. Uh, Jim, I know you've got a couple of questions for Bob. Hello, Jim. When you're starting to end operations, I wonder how much of these ending operations are for good and how much is because of Boeing. Uh, George Bush's International Airport, Bellingham International Airport in Washington, Syracuse Hancock International Airport in New York, Mexico's Cozumel well International Airport. How many of these are the fall of Boeing? How many of these are just saying, you know what, this is just not, we're not making enough money here? Well... We, we have got to hit our financial returns, period, and get back to where we are covering our cost of capital as a first step. So the network actions uh, have really nothing to do with the Boeing delay. We're taking network actions regardless. Now, the, the Boeing delays are very painful. They cause us to replan. Uh, they hurt us on the revenue front. They cause us to be inefficient. And uh, we're working all of that. But no, the, the network actions will continue along the, with the rest of our comprehensive action plan. Well, I, you know, Bob, I guess I'm I, I'm spoiled here. I, I listen to Phil LeBeau closely, and Phil interviews uh, everybody in the industry. American number looked bad, and then boom, the number's better than I thought. Delta, better than I thought. United, better than I thought. I, I don't want to see you down there with JetBlue in the scrub. Well, the, the demand for our product is, is very strong, uh, Jim. I mean, we again, we had record revenues here in the first quarter record passengers and our sequential and while we were off our plan our, our sequential uh, revenue performance from the fourth quarter actually was higher than historic norms and our guide would imply that our second quarter will be uh, sequentially the norm from the first quarter but i'm not underplaying the fact at all that we have a gap to our financial uh, targets and we will be absolutely relentless in pursuing those we have work to do and a lot of that is around the underperforming part of the network. We've taken action before in the first quarter. Uh, that has been very helpful and it's on plan and we're taking further actions here in the second quarter and we will take more actions with the network as, as we need to, along with all the other parts of our action plan that I described. Bob, are the underperforming areas, are they specific markets? Have you been able to, to identify why specific markets are underperforming? Or do you look at it and say, there's a weakness underneath 
generally speaking, in terms of demand? Well, uh, you know, Phil, the other big thing that's changed, obviously, is, is costs are much higher. Labor costs, especially, have come up a lot. And it typically takes, you know, the revenue performance a while to catch that. But no, we, we can easily identify areas, uh, particularly in our development markets. And, and we added a lot of capacity last year as we restored our, our network and got all of our aircraft flying. So we have a lot of capacity that is in development today. So no, we can see the areas of underperformance and that is what we are attacking. And you've done a lot of hiring, especially as you planned on having a number of planes being flown, pilots. Uh, have you put a pause on that? We did, yeah. We, we, we were aiming at, uh, in a lot of cases, you aim a year out, particularly with pilots. So we're, we were aiming at where we thought our aircraft and our fleet plan would be a year from now. Obviously that's changed. We have stopped and frozen nearly all hiring. We have uh, voluntary programs underway. And we expect to end 2024 uh, 2,000 heads below 2023. And we'll be down again in 2025. And through our voluntary uh, uh, time off programs right now, we're already seeing nearly 1,000 employees uh, take, those, take those programs. Changes in the air. Bob Bill, Jordan. Thank you. And happy Good. birthday, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. I've heard it from a number of people today. Guys, I'll send it back to you.